TDD versus BDD. Test-driven development versus behavior-driven development. If you're looking for a great non-technical introduction, you've come to the right place. Welcome to Development That Pays. My name is Gary Strawn, and this is the motorbike I owned as a teenager. Well, same model anyway. This one looks new, and mine was very, very second-hand. It wasn't the most reliable machine, and as a result, it taught me a fair bit about testing. I had one key test that I'd do every time I came to ride it. I tried to start it. And then I'd go on to test. Nothing, nothing at all. Of course I didn't. Unless, of course, it didn't start. Then I would do other tests. It became second nature for me to pull off the plug cap, unscrew the spark plug, plug it back into the plug cap, jump on the Kickstarter, and check that I was getting a spark. If the spark didn't look very healthy, I might check the spark plug gap. Now, checking the spark plug gap is a great example of a unit test. It's a test of an individual component of what is a complex system. Importantly, it's a test of that individual component in isolation. After all, the gap doesn't depend on anything else. Compare that with the test of trying to start the engine. Trying to start the engine is a great example of a black box test. I don't have to unscrew anything to perform the test. Indeed, I don't have to know anything about the inner workings of the motorbike to perform it. All I need to know are the inputs to supply, fuel on, neutral gear, little bit of throttle, jump on the Kickstarter, and the output to look for, the sound of a running engine. It's actually a particular kind of black box test. It's a direct test of a behavior that any end user would expect of their motorbike. The behavior being a running engine. That makes it a behavioral test. What about the other test I mentioned? The one where I pulled off the plug cap, unscrewed the spark plug, pushed the spark plug back into the plug cap, and jumped on the Kickstarter to check that I was getting a spark? Well, that's neither a unit test, nor is it a behavioral test. It sits somewhat uncomfortably between the two. It's an example of a functional test the expected function being the production of a spark. A function, by the way, that depends on a whole host of components working in concert. As a test type, it's slightly unsatisfactory. A pass doesn't guarantee that the engine will start. We'd need a behavioral test for that. And a fail doesn't indicate the root cause of the problem. We'd need a series of unit tests to be able to do that. Those are reasons enough, I think, to eliminate functional testing from our inquiries leaving us rather conveniently with the very building blocks of behavior-driven development and test-driven development. We'll dive deep into the latter in the very next episode. If you haven't already done so, now would be a great time to subscribe to this channel. That way you'll be notified the moment a new episode is ready, which is something that happens each and every Wednesday. Click the big red button and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Cheers for now.